Hey guys, welcome to another video. Crocus is one of my favorite flowers because they announce spring. So let's paint a magical layered crocus flower today. A full list of materials is in the description. Watercolors are translucent. This is what we will make use of today to paint this gorgeous flower. I start by pre-wetting the first petal with water only and then I apply a very light wash of the purple. Pre-wetting the petals is important to avoid hard edges or water lines on the petals. Leaving a small gap to the pencil line will make the next step easier. There are many different types of crocus flowers and they come in many different colors and with many different patterns. For this painting, I chose purple. While it is possible to paint this x-ray flower in multiple colors, in my opinion, it is not as effectful. It just gets complicated to the eye. Once the light purple wash is evenly applied, I will change to a smaller brush. With a small brush, I pick up pure pigment from the palette and close the gap between the petal and the pencil line. The pigment will bleed towards the petal and leave a soft gradient. It is important to not have too much water in the brush, as this can cause dark purple blossoms. I want a gradient, not purple patches. I prefer to take watercolor off the brush by tapping it on the palette, but sometimes it is easier to touch a paper towel with the tip of the brush. When dabbing the brush on the palette, I can make sure to reshape the tip of the brush to a pointy tip. Painting straight lines here is a challenge for many people, but don't let this stop you from trying it out. If you are having trouble with it, try using a different brush that can do the trick. You can also try taping the painting to a board and turn it in the direction that makes it easier for you to paint a straight line. For many people it is easier to paint an outside curve, like I did on the left side of the paddle. If your line did not come out straight enough, it might also have to do with the structure of your paper. With rough papers, you can sometimes have trouble getting the bristles in every crack as you move your brush on it. Try a softer brush or slowing down the speed at which you move your brush on the paper. Overall, the biggest problem will probably be to keep the paper wet enough to avoid hard edges. If they do appear, don't risk any blooms. Just let the painting dry and even them out later with a moist brush. It is possible to make some corrections while the watercolor is still wet. Sometimes the gap I left is too big and the higher pigmented watercolor will not touch it. In this case, I carefully reapply some water to the paddle gently touching the newly applied pigment. This will allow it to bleed. Be very careful not to scrub the darker pigment or to go over it too much. This would mess up the gradient. Another way to make corrections is to use a larger brush to redistribute the pigment if you cause blooms. Or you can use it as a sponge to soak up some pigment in order to avoid puddles. It is also possible to apply some more of the darker pigment to intensify the colors or straightening out some lines. I keep the petal very light towards the stem in order to create a soft transition later. Once the first petal is completely dry, we can continue with the next one. Let's just skip through the petals, as I only repeat the same process as for the first petal. First, I pre-wet the whole petal with water. Second, I add a light wash of purple to it. Third, I close the gap with a small brush and a highly intense pigment. Fourth, I make some corrections. And fifth, I soften the transition at the stem area. In order to get the full x-ray effect, I paint the petals in the back first, working my way to the front. 
All details, like folded over parts of the petals, also need to be completed before painting another layer on top. I try my best not to scrub any of the previous layers, as it can loosen watercolors and lift them. This is the reason as well why I'm working back to front. It is inevitable to wash out the previous petals, at least a little bit, while I'm applying the next layer on top of it. With watercolors, things that are in the back are usually painted as out of focus or washed out. This is perfect because the petals in the back of the flower will automatically be washed out, at least a little bit by adding the next layer. For every petal that I paint, the watercolor wash becomes slightly more intense and less diluted with water. This makes it easier to add the next layer and easier to see the layers. Painting the petals one by one, it just looks magical as you can see the x-ray effect appear. Feel free to skip to the next chapter if you think you got the hang of it. Let's continue with the base color of the stem. I pre wet in the area and let the watercolor bleed towards the center, leaving a white gap in the middle. The color I'm using is lemon yellow mixed with a tiny little bit of sap green. Painting the background is easy. I wet in an area that is larger than the area I intend to paint. Then I apply the premixed watercolor with a larger brush and let it bleed to create a soft edge towards the top. In order to keep the background interesting, I add some splatters of watercolor and water only while the background is still wet. This will create blooms. For variation in the blooms, 
I add the splatters at different stages during the drying process. Whenever there is a splatter that ended up on dry paper, I can soften it with a wet brush. I simply wet a brush and dab it once. For the stem and background, I'm using only two colors. Using more colors would attract more attention to the background and I want the attention to be on the flower. The two colors I'm using are sap green and lemon yellow. Using two colors only will make the painting look more cohesive as these colors are mixed with different quantities of each pigment for each individual part of the painting. For the stem, the color mixture has more lemon yellow and only a little bit of green in it. For the background, it will use mainly green with a little lemon yellow in it. The crocus flower has leaves, which I intend to add in a loose manner. I gently wet in the background where I intend to paint them and then I apply some of the premixed watercolor. This time the watercolor is not as diluted with as much water and I can even add a little more sap green to intensify the color. Next, the outer edges of the stem need to be darkened a little bit to make it appear round. For this, I mixed lemon yellow with a little sap green, making the color only slightly darker than the base color of the stem. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you soon with another video.